Hello and welcome, I'm Philip Magnus and I am here to speak with you today about something that is very near and dear my heart. Yes, indeed, Star Wars. I know you're shook. Well, I'm not just talking about any old Star Wars thing, I'm talking about the new novel by Charles Soule that came out a few weeks ago on the 2nd of January, or was it the 5th? It was the 5th. On the 5th of January, and it is quite excellent. It has some issues and um, some things I did not enjoy necessarily, some of which I overthought, but I have a lot to say and most of it, the vast majority in fact, is very excellent indeed. Take a look. Like many, I was hopeful that this new High Republic project might do a great deal to divorce this franchise from what has proved to be a bit of a toxic relationship with the Skywalkers. And when I say this, I'm looking squarely at the sequel trilogy, only occasionally eyeing the prequels. Charles Soule pens this opening chapter in the High Republic imprint. When the announcement was made, it went a long way towards building my personal excitement, on account of the excellent Darth Vader series Soul penned between 2017 and 2018. While I thought Kieran Gillen did stunning unparalleled work with his 2015 series featuring a post-Episode 4 Vader, Soul's take on the eponymous villain proved he could write captivating, layered stories in that galaxy far, far away. I had faith in Charles Soul. Having now finished Light of the Jedi, I must admit that fate has been largely justified. Despite having a few issues here and there with Light of the Jedi, this is a splendid addition to the ever-growing canon of the Star Wars universe. Soul has tapped into the magic that is behind this franchise's staying power, has captured so much of what makes this universe feels special to many of us from earliest age. In less than 400 pages, he has managed to introduce, define and fully flesh out a generation of new characters, many of whom I am beyond excited to read and listen and learn more about. I cannot overstate how brilliant a job Sol has done with the characterization of major Jedi, such as Avar Chris and Elsa Mann, as well as more minor ones like Porter Engel, and of course many non-Jedis as well, such as the Chancellor of the Republic, Lena So. The relationships between Avar and Elsa, but also between Jedi such as Loden Greatstorm and his Padawan, Bel Zetafar, for example, are multifaceted, built on friendship and love and even occasionally hints of resentment. Each relationship represented carries real weight, which of course does a wonderful job of investing the reader into each separate character. The first quarter of the novel is the epitome of everything I love about space opera science fiction. Incredibly high stakes, a disaster that strikes suddenly and sets up a cataclysmic event, and of course, a band of heroes, both Jedi and normal folks ready to sacrifice and put everything on the line for the good of all. At once, this opening sets up a tone, which is far darker than what I expected. It establishes stakes. No one is safe. Not a captain, not a techie, not a Jedi master even. And it makes a bold... oh, well, except for Yoda. And it makes a bold statement about how this High Republic is different, really the ideal form of that sad shadow that the Dark Lords of the Sith succeeded in taking over and transforming from the inside, 200 years later. It's all enclosed within words repeated again and again. We are the Republic, which might come across as very corny when read or heard out of context. All the more power to Soul, then, for writing a vast majority of scenes in which this line comes across as natural, and to Mark Thompson, who sells every single utterance of it. The Force is illustrated here much better than just about anywhere else since the original trilogy, at least the light side is. 
Come to think of it, Saul also is the mind behind the astounding way in which Darth Vader's false self is presented. So, two for two on that score for Charles Saul. What the author does here is, he offers our POV Jedi's, that is, point of view, to visualize the Force in starkly differing ways. For Ava Chris, the Force is a song all surrounding, sad and beautiful and terrifying all at once. For Elsa Mann, it is as he self deprecatingly thinks, well, a Force but in a way that allows him to attempt new and often unsuccessful, occasionally ingenious, applications of the Force. For yet a different Jedi, the Force is an ocean, much of it penetrated by the light, its depths unknowable darkness. The writer's efforts in drawing the Force in so many different metaphorical dimensions bears fruit, really manages to convince the reader of this idea that it is this living energy which manifests in different ways for everyone. Which is, I think, far better than midichlorians, question mark? The Nihil step into the role of antagonists here. They are pirates, perhaps the nastiest variety of pirates we've seen in Star Wars, lacking even a hint of scruples. The name still annoys me a little bit. It comes with all these connotations, both philosophical and in the universe. Nihilists, the Nile, are not. Though I suppose the lack of morality and the antithesis of the High Republic's We Are All the Republic message is translated through the name. The Nihilists are not driven by the need to destroy, but rather a more hedonistic impulse twinned with every vice you could think of. It's a pet peeve, I'm well aware of this. It likely bothers five other nerds as much as it bothers me, and even then, it doesn't bother me enough not to enjoy the antagonism inherent to the role the Nile play here. But if Jedi and Sith serve as proof of anything, it is that you can make up group names in this universe and imbue them with whatever meaning you want them to have and have no issue whatsoever, rather than recontextualize real-world terms, risking humongous nerds like myself to write 200 words on what is dangerously close to a semiotic discussion. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you Ferdinand de Saussure. As for in-universe intertextuality, we've got Darth Nihil from the brilliant narrative work that is Knights of the Old Republic 2. He, like most of the Old Republic stuff, was wiped away from canon as soon as Disney bought Lucasfilm. But I'm sure I'm not the only one, the only old hand at this, ever hopeful, ever wistful, that the events of that game will be re-canonized. I was even worried that the introduction of Bacta in The Light of the Jedi implicitly took away the chance that Kota II the Sith Lords might ever become canon again, because I thought the Jedi Exile woke up in a Bacta tank in the prologue to that game. But I did double check and eventually realized that it was actually a Colto tank, which is a different, weaker healing agent than Bacta. If none of these words made sense to you, take them as proof of just how nerdy I am. Most fascinating in this organization is the eye of the Nahil, Martian Rowe who has a great deal of menace about him, punctuated by an excellent delivery of his lines by Mark Thompson. Thompson uses this youthful voice, almost pleasant, if not for the hints of pain and the way he speaks almost out of breath. By the end of Light, Martian Rowe is well and truly terrifying his motives nature and true goal will be one of the mysteries lingering over this imprint for a long time to come and i am looking forward to learning every morsel of information for him that has been taught out by the team at lucasfilm this novel has such a hopeful tone despite content that was shockingly dark perhaps rather because of it the light of the Jedi does shine brightest when 
the Jedi themselves face against the deepest shadows, and if the rest of the writers involved in this event do even half so fine a job with this, the High Republic will be a strong outing across the mediums it has embraced. Mark Thompson's narration continues to be top-notch. I have spoken about him previously whenever I have discussed any of the Tron novels in my reviews, but he is the reason I do not buy physical copies of these books anymore. Whenever he narrates one of these novels, I know I'll have a dozen hours or over of pure entertainment ahead of me. It is like a movie in my mind. I do wish we could have gotten another... not even a hundred pages. Perhaps another seventy would have been enough to expand on a few characters, set up a few sacrifices or losses a little better. For what it's worth, Soul covers a truly spectacular amount of ground in an incredibly short span of pages. It's a difficult task, setting the foundations of a multimedia project, which not only has to tell a full story, but it has to introduce a whole swath of characters, plot threads, and conflicts for the other half dozen authors involved in the High Republic to pursue. Oh, and uh, here's my five cents of theory crafting. Is it just me? Or is Ava Chris a little too close for comfort to Avarice? In a universe in which the brightest Jedi often plunge to the lowest depths of darkness? I ain't saying I just figured out who's starring the Acolyte coming to Disney Plus in 2023. This is not an ad. But... She totally is the Acolyte, guys. And also, she is just the coolest character. I, I love a good badass Jedi. I do. I really, really do. And she floats in the air, so... Uh, I really don't need anything more. Back to you, Philip. Did I manage to convince you of giving a shot to The Light of the Jedi? Because, between you and me, it really has a lot going for it. There is one aspect of the book that I did not necessarily enjoy, but if I were to get into it, that would be so spoiler-heavy, and I just don't want to risk anyone spoiling that book for themselves. You'll probably get into talking about it over the next couple of months, certainly, perhaps not on YouTube, but definitely on my blog. And uh, if you're interested for that, why don't you follow my uh, social media and uh, also like this video, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell button for more notifications. Imagine I've got one of those annoying little click sounds that other YouTubers do but that I just don't want to. I'll see you again next time. Bye! And uh, now I'm probably not reading the kids' books just because... Uh, I don't...